Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as we gather for worship today. It's good to see you all. I missed you all last week. I was here. I don't know where you all were, but I was here. It's good that we don't have any snow on the ground. It's all gone. We'll never see another drop of snow again. At least Tim and I hope so. But uh, it is good to be with you all. I'm back in person this week. And thank you all for adjusting last week as we dealt with some ice in our parking lot and everything else. So today's a good day. It's a day to worship and a day to celebrate and a day to experience God's holy love. And a couple of announcements for us as we begin this day of worship. Uh, first off, if you gave uh, something to the church in 2023, first off, thank you. We appreciate that generosity. But also, too, in the back in our narthex on the welcome table, there are your giving statements uh, for 2023. And so if you will go through those and pick them out uh, before you leave here today, that will help us in saving the cost of stamps. And so uh, please pick those up today. If you don't pick them up today, we will mail them out tomorrow. And so uh, please help us out today in picking those up. Also, we are getting really close to the start of the Lenten season. I want to remind you that on April the 14th, yes, Valentine's Day, we will gather here for worship at 6 o'clock for worship and to celebrate and to reflect on the meaning of Christ and the sense of Lent as we begin that time of holy season with Ash Wednesday. Also, each Wednesday during the Lenten season on Wednesday, starting on the 21st at 12, We'll gather for like a Lenten luncheon. We're going to invite you to bring your own lunch, your own drinks, your own, all, all that fun stuff. Meet us in the fellowship hall for a 30-minute time of worship and devotion uh, throughout the Lenten season. So that's going to start on February the 21st. Also, we're coming closer to Super Bowl Sunday. And yes, the 49ers are going to be in the Super Bowl. I am promising that. I am gu guaranteeing that. And my hat in my office says the Niners are going to win. And so if we don't win, I'll be crying tonight. But as we get closer to Super Bowl Sunday on the, on the 11th, we do want to invite you to bring some canned soups, canned goods to support our neighboring food pantries. Uh, and we'll have a basket out there for the 49ers in the NFC. That's going to happen. Or in the AFC for the Kansas City Swifts and the Baltimore Ravens. And so I uh, hope that you can be a part of that coming up on February the 11th. Also, we've got another event showing coming up, our senior prom on February the 10th. Eric is one of our organizers of that. He's going to speak to that for about for a little bit for you. Morning. Morning. So in about two weeks, uh, two weeks from yesterday, February 10th, Saturday at 4 p.m., we have a an event, senior prom, uh, that we have planned. Uh, it's not your typical senior prom with teenagers and limousines. It's it's for the senior crowd, 55 and older. And we'll make a few exceptions for people that in the congregation that are under 50, so that's fine. Um, but it's going to be a great event. It's going to be a fellowship event where there's going to, of course, be food and drinks, as usual. And uh, the food will be finger food, uh, cookies, uh, stuff like that. <coughs> and also, we're going to have a, a backdrop where you can take selfie photos. We're going to have some games for the tables. We're going to have uh, some cornhole in the corner. and. Um, some other things are going to happen, some surprises along the way. Uh, one thing that's going to happen at 5 o'clock, the thunder tones are going to show up. I happen to sing with the thunder tones. Uh, 15, to, 15 to 20 people will be showing up to sing a cappella for about an hour. It's, they're really good, so I suggest at least showing up then to listen to that. So it'll be a fun fellowship event. I'm asking, or we are asking, Jennifer, William, and I are asking three things if we could. One, we are almost fully funded. Uh, if, if anybody wanted to give a small one or two donations to help out, it would pretty much fully fund us. Uh, we're okay, but it would just make it a little bit better. Um, also, we have in the Narthex some sign-up sheets, or if you're online, you could contact Jennifer or I um, in regards to if you'd like to help decorate the tables or uh, the, the room or, or clean up afterwards, that would be much appreciated, and we would put your name down for that. And also, if anybody wants to make some cookies or brownies or finger foods of some sort, we would welcome that as a donation as well. So if you just contact us, and we will make it happen, and we appreciate anything you can do for us. We'll see you on Saturday the 10th. Thank you, Eric. And obviously see him after church if you want to know more and talk more about this great event coming up. 
Before we start our worship, I want to reiterate uh, an announcement that we made last week, because we know as soon as, like, when we're online, we, what always happens, our stats tell us, is that as soon as we are done with the main portion of the service, we dump out. And so we're, we want to make sure that everyone knows kind of the announcement that was made at the end of our online worship, and that is that I am leaving uh, effective June 30th. Not today. There were some rumors going around that this was my last <laughs> Sunday. Uh, I think that was hopeful wishing from some. Uh, but June 30th is my last day officially with you all. I think my last Sunday is either Father's Day or the week after. We haven't figured that one out yet. We'll figure it out in the next. We've got time uh, to figure all that out. I, I do want to say I have appreciated my four years with you all. But as I said last week, it's time. It's time for you to receive a new pastor. It's time for us to deal with some things that we've been needing to deal with for a while, uh, which is the primary reason uh, that I asked to leave, which is to help us with the long-term longevity of our church uh, through our finances. But know that I've loved you all, and, and I hope that the feeling's mutual. I hope that this has been a good season. I know it's been a hard season. I have less hair now, but that's okay. But I hope it's been a good season. I hope it's been a hopeful season. But we've got some time left. Not today. <laughs> but we've got some time left. And we're going to worship we're going to pray. We're going to wrestle with hard things. We're going to cry over my Niners. We're going to cry over WVU not being able to play basketball very well. We're going to do the things that we've always done. That's love God, grow in faith, and serve the Lord. We don't know who is coming next. There's a lot of questions that have to be wrestled with that. But as soon as we know, we will tell you. But we ask you to pray. Pray for this transition. Pray for your church. Pray for everything that is going on as we seek to all follow God wherever the Lord is leading us, as we do today as we worship. For we come to worship God and to seek God, to find God in the midst of whatever we're dealing with, and to find God's hope. And so as we find ourselves in this day of worship, to find hope, I invite you to stand as you are able for our call to worship and then join our voices together as we sing, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. <laughs> Come, let us give thanks to the Lord with full hearts. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Glory be to the one whose wonders are to be remembered. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The Lord feeds the righteous with truth. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Come, let us give thanks to God. Let us sing.
as we continue to worship, we do so to affirm our faith in the Lord our God. We do so through the words of our affirmation of faith that comes to us from the Apostles' Creed on page 882. And so, my friends, my brothers and sisters, what is it that you believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father. see it as your arm about our children to come forward for a time of children's moment. <coughs> Y'all enjoy the snow last week? Yeah. 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 So I, I've I, been playing in the snow. You've been playing in the snow? I made a snow angel. You made a snow angel? Me too. And I went sledding. You went sledding? I didn't. I stayed inside. <laughs> but you know, you know what the hardest word is for us to say for me to say? Yeah. What do you think it might be? Yeah, so what do you think is the hardest word for me to say? Mm, making a snowman. Making a snowman, yeah, that's pretty hard. And it's no angel. Snow angel, no. I've been watching TV. Yeah. I've been watching TV. Hey. Santa's home. If you see Santa, we said the word no give you no question. Right, yeah. So you know the hardest word for me to say sometimes is sorry. Yeah. And sometimes I say it a lot, but sometimes it's like, I don't know what I'm saying. And sometimes we don't, have, we don't like to say we're sorry, right? We don't like to say when we did something wrong and admit, admit it, right? We don't like to admit when maybe we, we didn't, were nice to our friends or our family. It's kind of hard, right, to, say, to admit that, isn't it? But you know what's cool when we say it? Somebody comes up to us and say, it's okay. And you know what's good about when we hear that? Yeah, it's paper. That when we hear those words of it's okay... They, they don't look at that anymore. And they don't think of us as that person who did something wrong. They think of us as our friend and our, our sister or our, our grandchild and everything else because that's who we are. Even when we make mistakes, we're still that same person that they love us and God loves us. Okay, well, at your church. <laughs> okay, so remember that even when we have to say oh, we're sorry that God still loves us and our family still loves us and all of our brothers and sisters and that even our mistakes don't define us, okay? So let's pray. Holy God, we give you thanks for the day. We thank you for words that remind us of your love. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you can go to Children's Church. <laughs> Oh.
Did I get to where I wanted to go? <laughs> I love that they keep me on my toes. I, I, I honestly... Of, you know, honestly, I, I love that I know when I come up, when they come up here, you never know what they're going to say. And it's just like, okay, at some point we're going to get there. We're just going to go about five exits first. And that's okay. That's okay. Because as we've, you've often heard me say, a noisy church is a holy church. A noisy church is a holy church. So let's pray. Holy God, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for your, this time to gather, and we thank you for noise, God. We thank you for disruptions and laughter. We thank you for things not always going according to plan. We thank you for how you show up in those moments to bring your grace and your hope and your truth. So, Lord, we celebrate you. We celebrate you on this day of worship and this day where we gather still in this epiphany season, yearning for your light and your hope. We are so thankful for you, for your hope, your joy, and your peace that works amongst us. But Lord, we confess that sometimes, Lord, we forget to just slow down and take you all in. Sometimes, God, we're more concerned with the world than we are of you. Sometimes, God, we're more concerned with our grocery lists and our activities, more concerned with what we have to do than being with you. Too often, God, we think more of ourselves than we do you. So Lord, by our words, our actions, and our deeds, we just pray that you will forgive us. Even as we say those words that are often hard for us to say of, we're sorry. And please forgive us. Please place within us a new heart of hope and love. Please place within us a new desire to live for you. To live for you in our world that is so in need of you and your hope. For as we go forth in this world, we see the brokenness. We see the brokenness of so much pain and so much anger, so much struggle. And Lord, it's easy for us to feel like there's nothing we can do. And so Lord, help us to remember that you call us to be a light in the midst of brokenness. That you call us to be a vessel of hope and a witness of hope in the storms that we often encounter. Lord, come and make your face shown in the midst of the struggles of our world, of its violence, of its anger, of its resentments, of its bitterness. Help us to live a different way, a way that's focused on you. Pour into us, God, the desires of your heart, so that in all that we do, we may give you honor and glory, God. Come, Lord Jesus, come. And come even now as we offer ourselves to you through the words that you have taught us to pray as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. May us not temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us continue in our worship through the giving of our tithes and offering.
Lord, you are the giver of every good and holy thing. Giver of grace, giver of life, the giver of love. Lord, we thank you for these, your gifts. We give them to you in hopes that all may see that you are the giver of life and hope and love. Through Christ we pray. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> As we continue in worship, as you are able, I invite you to stand for the hearing of the gospel reading for us this morning. Our gospel passage comes to us from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verse 21 through 28. Today I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Hear these words. Jesus and his companions went to the town of Capernaum. When the Sabbath day came, he went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching, for he taught with real authority, quite unlike the teachers of religious law. Suddenly, a man in the synagogue who was possessed by an evil spirit cried out, Why are you interfering with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus reprimanded him. Be quiet. Come out of the man, he ordered. At that, the evil spirit screamed, threw the man into a convulsion, and then came out of him. Amazement gripped the audience, and they began to discuss what had happened. What sort of new teaching is this, they asked excitedly. It has such authority, even evil spirits obey his orders. The news about Jesus spread quickly throughout the entire region of Galilee. 
This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Will you pray with me? Most holy and gracious God, Father, Lord, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for this time to be in worship with you. We thank you for your presence amongst us. And Lord, as we enter into this time of deep discipleship and devotion, we ask for you to open our hearts, our minds, and our ears so that we may be attentive to you. Turn out the distractions of our day and our lives so that we may focus entirely upon your word speaking to us. Lord, may I become less so that you may be more in this moment. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. We live in some strange times, do we not? It's not hard to turn on the television, open up a newspaper, go to an internet news site and see the struggles of our time. It's not hard to drive down US 60 or down even Pea Ridge Road or even down some of the other places and see the struggles. We see the drug epidemic. We see the issues of our hatred and our anxieties towards one another. We see the issues of violence. We see the issues of even our own unwillingness to trust one another. We see it all, we live it all, and we wonder about it all. And yet as we see it, as we embrace it, as we encounter it, Perhaps we ask the question that comes to us from the psalmist of Psalm 121. From where does my help come from? Where does my help come from in the midst of the struggles that we face? Struggles that are not unlike any other time in history. Every, every generation has had its struggles. But as we look upon our world, as we look upon the evil that exists in our world, where does our help come from? Where does our help come from? Even more, whom are we looking to as the answer to the evil in this world? Who has the power and the authority to overcome the issues that we face? And where does our help come from? Perhaps a question for us to ask like the psalmist as we think about this passage from this morning. A very hard and challenging passage. One where we find Jesus in Capernaum. Where we find him at this place of common connection. You see, Capernaum was the base of operations. It was the ministry base for Jesus and his disciples. It was this seaport along the shores of Galilee, likely a city that James and Simon Peter and Andrew and John had made their base of home. It was a place, too, that Jesus would come to be familiarized with, where he would go back to for rest and where he would be sent out from during his earthly ministry. There in the center of Capernaum, there is a, a synagogue. Today, it's a, a synagogue that dates back to the fourth century, but there's a belief that there's some foundations that date back to the time of Jesus. And likely in that same spot, or maybe somewhere else in the city, Jesus came to worship on that Sabbath day, on that Saturday morning just as he would on any other Sabbath. 
just as he would on any other day, to preach, to teach, and to heal. Mark doesn't tell us exactly what Jesus spoke on that day. That is left to just those who were in that initial hearing. We don't know what scripture passage from the old, what we call the Old Testament that he read from. We don't know the words that he proclaimed that day. But it was enough that those who were gathered in the midst knew that something was different about this Jesus. That there was something different about his words and the authority that came with them. This wasn't just some other rabbi, some other teacher, some other scribe that was passing down what they had heard and seen. This was a different kind of power, a different kind of authority. Something a little bit deeper. For Jesus had the power and authority as the one who came from God. And that's what makes it different. That's what makes his teaching and his words different. He could speak with words that enlist hope and love and challenge because his words are that of God himself, for he is God incarnate. The words Jesus speaks are full of power, for he is the word of God, the incarnate God, God present with us. His words can challenge us. His words can bring us to our knees. His words can uplift us. And his words can make us wonder, where is God leading us in this time, in this place? His words are full of authority. Because they are spoken from the one true God, the one true hope, and the one true light for all. Jesus spoke in that synagogue with that power, that authority that changes the world on the mere voice of God's holy presence in their lives. And the people were astonished amazed at what they were hearing, but the true impact of the power and authority of Jesus' words did not come from the witness of astonishment of those gathered in the synagogue. It came from this unlikely source, this man who was in the synagogue who was consumed by an evil spirit. Now, the word in the Greek gives us a sense that this spirit, this posture that was consuming this person, this man, could be both of a sense of being unclean, of unpure to enter the spot of worship, but it can also give us a sense that is more contextual to the story of someone who was just consumed by this presence of evil, that it was consuming their entire life consuming everything about them and every aspect of their being. It was this spirit that consumed this person that spoke out in response to Jesus' message and affirmed who Jesus is. Note that it was the evil spirit that recognized Jesus as the Holy One in the passage. For it knew that Jesus has come as the Son of God, the Messiah, the one who had the power and authority over all things. This evil spirit recognized who Jesus is as the Holy One, but then said something else. What are you going to do with me? What are you here for, Jesus? Jesus. What are you planning to do? Jesus quickly responds with words that are not just words that are feel-good words, but words that elicit power and action that can transform lives, transform hope, and transform the world with his authority. He spoke a word that cast out this evil spirit. Be silent. Be gone. 
And upon the word of Christ, the evil spirit departed this person. Upon the word of Christ, this evilness that consumed this man was gone. For Jesus had the power and has the power over not just the world, but also over the demonic, the evil, and has come to defeat it, to cast it aside, to say it has no power, no influence, no nothing over us. This demonic recognized that in Jesus is the one who would come through the cross to defeat all evil in this world. That in Christ is the power, not just in words that make us feel good, but words that can challenge the evil in this world to go a different route. That in Jesus is authority that comes from on high from God to live a different way and to bring hope into the fallen places of our world to heal the brokenness and to bring hope. It's in Christ is the power that can defeat the evil and cast it aside. So we go back to that question. From where does our hope come from? From where does our help come from? In the face of evil in the face of atrocities, in the face of injustice? Where do we, the church today, believe that our hope comes from? How we respond to that question is how we depend on Christ. And do we respond in the way of the psalmist that our hope comes in the name of the Lord? Or do we respond in the way of the world? In the face of the world's evil, how do we respond? In the face of the world's injustice, how do we respond? In the face of the drug epidemic that is crippling our community, how do we respond? In the face of racism, how do we respond? In the face of ableism that seeks to tell people with disabilities that you're not wanted, how do we respond? In the face of greed, how do we respond? In the face of self-focusedness, where we're more concerned about ourselves and our Stanley Cups, how do we respond? In the midst of our anger, our hatred of anyone that votes against us, our inability of seeing people who vote a different way as children of God and people of worth, How do we respond? In the face of the evil that exists in our world today, how do we, as the followers of Christ at Pea Ridge United Methodist Church, how do we respond? Too often our response is that of the world. To seek the world's answers of violence. To seek the world's answers of anger to seek the world's answers of putting down people whom we disagree with, of offering smart aleck comments online if we don't like them, of dismissing people if they don't look like us or if they don't have the the same abilities as us, or even to presume that we know what's best for them. Instead of being a light of Christ in a broken and hurting world, too often the church today, and even me and you and all of us, the light that we share is just that of the world's evilness. 
And even when we put it on our bumper stickers, even when we say we will live for God, we end up living for the world's might because it makes us feel better. It makes us feel good. And then we wonder where the church loses its relevancy and loses its voice in the midst of evil. We are called to be a living witness in the hurting and the brokenness of our world. In the living witness of the Christ who has the power and the authority to overcome all things. Do we believe it? Do we claim it? Do we live it out? Because if we don't, the witness of the church gets minimized. And the witness of our faith becomes useless because it's void of the power of God. And we get more concerned about things that just don't matter. Don't matter in the cosmic scheme of things, like money in the offering plate or the leak that keeps dripping behind me. There are things more important. Joining with Christ and overcoming the evil in this world is what the church is called to do. And where does my help come from? My help comes in the name of the Lord, who is all power and who has all authority. Do we believe it? Do we live it out? That's the question for us to wrestle with this week. Will you pray with me? Most holy and gracious God, Father, Lord, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for your love, for your grace, and for your joy amongst us. Lord, as we enter into this world, as we enter into your mission field, Lord, we recognize that sometimes, God, we have failed to speak against the evil that we experience. We have failed to live up to your light in the midst of the struggles or even the wrestle with, God, where are you leading us? So come. Come. Offer your grace to us in the places where we have failed to be a light of hope. But help us to claim that power and authority that comes from you and to go with you wherever you may lead. Help us to be what you called us to be. Through Christ we pray. Amen. As we conclude our worship today, I invite you to stand as you're able as we sing, He Touched Me.
it was good to be with you. As I said at the beginning of worship, it was good to be in seeing you all again. I just want to remember, remind you that at 6.30 is the biggest game of the year, so, you know, go Niners and all that fun stuff. Uh, not that I'm rooting for anybody in particular. Not that God chooses sides, but he does choose the Niners. But as you go forth and go to whatever God has for you this day and this week, go with this benediction. Go. And remember that we go out into a world that's full of evil. That's okay. We go with God. We go with God who's already there. So go and join with God in the midst of fighting the evil. Seek godly answers to the problems in this world and go and be his hands, his feet, and his witness to heal the brokenness of our world. And go in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. Amen.